Now, if I were to tell you I've been catching crappie in 60 feet of water, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? That's what this video is about because more than likely, you thought the wrong thing. So what's going on guys? I'm Steven Turner with Turner Fishing. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you want to catch crappie 365 days of the year, you found the right place. So when you, I see a lot of people on Facebook, uh, YouTube, whatever, they're asking, well, what depth did you catch your fish? Which I mean, go find your own fish, obviously, but at the same time, new beginner crappie fishermen, hey, ask your questions you're going to either going to get a smart ass response or you're going to get the right response but you need to be asking the right question I have a deal on the website right now until friday the 12th i want to say it's the 12th yeah the 12th 30 percent off the entire website everything but the raffle so i am out of jig heads i need some money to buy some jig heads or some hooks to make jig heads so until then, we're out of jigheads. It may be a week or two before I can come up with that because I've got some pretty important bills to pay right now. Anyways, 30% off the website. Go check it out. If you don't want to buy any jigs or my jigs are lasting too long for you and you want to support the channel, click the join button down below. We're gonna give a shout out to all the members right here. I appreciate every single one of you. And to be honest, if everybody that watches this video bought the $1.99, it would, almost be life-changing so because if you ask me hey steven what depth did you catch your fish at the other day and i'm gonna be like well i was fishing in 60 feet of water and you're gonna be like dang there's brush piles on 60 feet of water and i mean theoretically there could be brush piles in 60 feet of water I, I don't know i've never looked for them but i'm fishing docks in 60 feet of water so in all reality I'm only fishing like eight foot deep, sometimes six foot deep. So when you ask a question, hey, what depth are you fishing at? And they tell you 20 feet. Why are you going out there and dropping your jig 20 feet deep in 20 feet of water and getting hung on the bottom? That's what I want to know. So on today's video, we're going to be going over some sonar images. Now we're going to do 2D and let's see, I'm, I'm looking at my computer for reference if you see me looking over here. So we're gonna be doing 2D, and we have uh, two down imaging that we're just gonna go over and cover and just kind of explain what the hell you're doing wrong. So first and foremost, we've got this image right here. This explains your beams. Now, blah, 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 electronics. I don't wanna hear that crap in the comments. You know, you can get a $100 down imaging unit at Walmart. You can get a hundred dollar down imaging unit at Walmart or, or 2D unit at Walmart. Come on now. Ugh. But side scan, I mean, that's a different story. It might cost you like 200 bucks to get a Helix 5, which you can't really see. I would go for a Helix 7 myself, but that's just me. But see this comb right here. You know, you got your, let me pull it up on my computer real quick. All right, so as you can see, it's showing you, you know, you got your 2D 200 kilowatts and the cone's really small. This is gonna be the most detail that you can get in that small cone. And then if you up it to 83, which I mean, I guess you're downing it to 83, you're gonna have a wider span of a cone and it's gonna be able to see just a little bit more. Now you gotta play with it, whatever image you like best, 2d you're basically running over the stuff anyway so i mean it's whatever image you like the best now down imaging you've got 455 kilowatts and it's spread out in a bigger cone which basically if you're looking at an image of side scan the black part down the middle is going to be your down imaging and then everything else is side scan if that makes sense like if you look at a side scan image you've got your boat trail and everything in that black abyss if you switch to down down imaging it's going to be the same so i just kind of wanted to cover that before we get into all of this now i'm not really going to go over side scan on today's video as you know I've, I've made a couple videos on that in the past because it's not really relevant for what i'm trying to teach on this one so we're going to switch over 
to the first image right here. And this one is just your plain Jane brush pile that you will find on a, a 2D sonar. You've got a piece of structure that's connected to the bottom, as you can see right here, where the, the arrow is. That means that this structure is connected to the bottom. It's not a fish, it's not whatever. And it goes up until, let's see, this 12 feet of water, that brush pile goes up to about six feet of water. So when you tell people that you're fishing 12 feet of water, or you caught your fish in 12 feet, this is what, exactly what I'm talking about. In reality, you're fishing four feet of water. Because you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight crappie on the screen right now. And every one of those fish is not 12 feet deep. So when you ask a question in your Facebook group or you ask your buddy, hey, what depth you fish, you caught your fish in and they say 12 feet, you gotta have in your mind, they're not fishing 12 feet. Now, they could be the complete opposite of the spectrum and actually be fishing 12 feet deep and catching them, but they're in 20 feet of water. But the likelihood of that is very, very small. So now if we go to the next image, well, let, let's explain how I know that's fish. You see how th these four dots above the brush pile are not connected to anything. They have white space around them. That's a fish or a floating rock. So obviously it's not a floating rock, so it's probably a fish. Now it could be a bluegill. It could be a perch. It could be a little bass. I mean, that's, that's the part of fishing you got to figure out whether it's a crappy or not. But given that it's on, on top of the brush pile and it's just hanging out, the more likely chance it is a crappy. Now, if you look on the top of this brush pile, you have one, two, three uh, dots that are red. Now, those are crappy tucked right on top of that brush pile. So if I were to fish this brush pile, I'm going to start out at about three three feet, uh, three feet, <laughs> three foot deep on my first couple casts and let that jig pendulum by them. You know, I'm gonna throw a uh, crappy man green, little minnow, uh, crappy man jig.com. And I'm just gonna let that jig pendulum right on by them. And then I'm gonna go to four feet, five feet, six feet until I start feeling the brush pile. I don't set the hook on the brush pile. I mean, if, it, if that brush pile bites, by all means, you hit, the, you hit that brush pile with all you got. But take your time, figure out what depth they want to bite. Just because that fish on this image right here is in, you know, five to six feet of water, four feet on some of them, doesn't mean you have to fish that deep. Crap your feet up. Remember that. You want to be above the fish. Now let's go to the next image. And we're going to pull up this huge lay down. Uh, you got 2D and down imaging right beside each other. This is in 35 feet of water. Now the cool thing about this is it shows the power of mega imaging. If you've never used a hummingbird unit with mega imaging, you get some of the clearest images imaginable for side scan, down scan. Now, the crazy thing about this is, I don't see a single fish on this brush pile, in my ex expert opinion. So I'm gonna zoom in on it myself. And yeah, all I see on the down imaging is tree limbs. Now, if you were looking at the 2D sonar, you might think they could be a couple fish over there at the beginning of the lay down, but I would not fish this brush pile at all because I do not see anything separating from that brush pile. Now you may be able to just shine a live scope on it and there could be some fish inside that brush pile that you couldn't see on anything else. But <clears throat> if I was idling through this, I'd be gone. Like, that'd be it. I'd, I'd just go to the next one. So let's check out another one. So this one is from another YouTuber. I don't know his name, it's just something I, I Googled. But it shows your transducer, your lake bottom, the brush pile, and the crappie itself. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. See on the other image, it, it, 
you didn't have any of these small white dots. When I'm looking for crappy on down imaging, I want it to look like somebody took a handful of rice, threw it in the water, and it all just got on top of the brush pile. That's a stacked brush pile. Now, your bigger fish are probably not gonna be in this pile. Every one of those fish is probably small on this image. I mean, there's probably, you know, a couple good ones in there, but most of the time when they're super, super stacked, you're gonna catch average size fish. Now, if you find the brush piles, it's got like four or five on it, that's where your big ones are gonna be. The big ones don't like to hang out with other ones. I don't know why. Kinda like me, I'm a big boy and I don't like to hang out with too many people. But, See on this one, you can see the clear brush pile. You can see the separation. On down imaging, you're gonna see a white dot, uh, whatever color scheme you got, but you want to have black around your fish. Now, if you have an image and you see something connected to the bottom, connected to that brush pile, it's probably not a fish. Now, if you've never been out on a live scoping trip with me or whatever, I found myself time and time again fishing for uh, water bottles. And basically what I mean by that, hang on, I got a bottle over here. The best way to set up a brush pile so it stands straight up is to take two liters or, you know, 16 ounces and tie a rope to it. And the bottle has air in it so it will keep that brush pile standing up. But you tie it close to the brush pile so you don't get hung. <laughs> a live scope, it looks like a damn crappy. So I, I don't know how many times I've dropped on a, a bottle and it not moved for five minutes and I'm like, oh, well that ain't even a fish. But yeah, on this image, I mean, this one's pretty self-explanatory. It's really hard to find a school like that unless you get really lucky or your, or your lake just has millions of fish in it. But what I want you to get out of this video is if I'm, if you're talking to me and I'm telling you I'm fishing 20 feet, in reality, I'm probably only fishing six feet deep. If I'm fishing 30 feet, I'm probably still only fishing six feet deep. For some reason, at least here in South Carolina, I catch 99% of my fish two to 10 feet deep. Now there are occasions where they are deeper, but for the most part, that's the, that's how deep they are all year long. Now, I know down in Florida, a lot of fish are caught off the bottom. They're really hard to find even on live scope, but you have a lot of grass too, so you gotta take that in consideration. If your lake has a lot of grass, a lot of this stuff isn't gonna be uh, relevant to your body of water. See, Lake Murray, I mean, it's, it's a big lake. Like, it, it is huge and every inch of that lake is different. If I go towards the dam, we've got hydrilla right now, which they're probably gonna kill it in the next year or two, I would assume, which sucks because we're gonna get a lot of big bass and a lot of big striper, and then they're just gonna go away again for the next 10 years. But if I go fish the hydrilla, it's gonna be like fishing a, a totally different lake. If I go to mid lake where most of the rock is on this lake, it's gonna be fishing a whole different lake. And then when I go to the rivers where I'm comfortable at, it's fishing a whole different lake than the other ones. So you, you just kinda gotta break it down, take your time, get your lazy ass out there, find these brush piles, find these ledges, drop-offs, rock piles even, docks, bridges. Take your time, it's hot. Use your side scan, use your down imaging, use your 2D, find fish and figure out what depth they're at. I hope I taught you something on today's video. You know, I try to not bullshit. You know, I, I, won't, I want you to go catch fish. I don't want you to be like, well, I watched that video and I don't even know nothing. So if I hurt your feelings, hey man, you get over it. 